Okay, doing some late night blitz, and let's kick it off with D4. And we'll go for this line, even though I feel it's subjectively bad after this move F6. Otherwise, I'm just getting, you know, a standard position. And let's go ahead and do that. All right. This feels very comfortable for white at this point with this extended stone wall structure with the bishop outside of the chain. Yeah, and he just wasted a full tempo there. I got a full free f4 in. And I'm looking to probably castle queenside here. All right. Um, I'll give up pawns for play. Or we'll do it that way. Makes it easy enough. Simple and safe. Knight can always come to c1 and then b3. And this is looking pretty good. Let's try to secure some key squares. If he takes, it opens up the f-file, and my bishop is very strong. He doesn't have an attack, and I've got pressure for days in the center and kingside. So this should, should be sufficient. How is he going to develop? Bishop e7, maybe? Okay. Let's go ahead and add numbing pressure to this open f file okay this was expected and should i wait on g4 now let's go ahead and play g4 to to prevent him from going to f5 if he goes h5 i go h3 we want to keep that knight lane okay let's keep the rook here so it has some flexibility to defend if we need it to I'm not too worried about any pawn push over here because of the knight covering pretty efficiently. That was probably a wasted move. That feels necessary. what he does is I could could have traded Queens but I felt like he's gonna have some trouble covering all the weaknesses here pretty quick if I take and he takes with the knight I still think I'm fine here Just because his king is still a bit awkward out in the open, that makes sense. I'm not interested in trading anymore. Go into D2 or E3. See, now he's trying to be persuasive, but is it enough? He's going to get that one now. But maybe I have Rook D1 if he takes on G4. Well, he's got Knight D5. Oh, uh, Queen takes Rook F4, and then the B pawn falls. That looks good. And I'm still hitting H6 in a lot of variations. Yeah, it's his uncoordination which is killing him here. He's always got to worry about his king being stuck in the middle, which leads to this passive move, which is very understandable. And I think I'm just going to go with the easy one here. He's probably looking to play a3. So let's go ahead and do that move just to try to get his queen to another square.
And if he wants to trade badly, we'll do it now. But he's left with all these weaknesses. Outside pass pawn. And this is a move simply to play quick at this point because he's only got three seconds. Okay, so let's see how I could have done better because I felt I left a lot to be desired in that game. And recently in my chessable course, The Aggressive Queen's Gamut Decline, I covered this position for black and I recommend F6 and this is by far, if you uh, can see the stats here, make sure, wow, it's small, but it's definitely there. F6 is the best scoring move and sets the most practical problems for white. Black wins 38% of the games in the Lee Chess database with white only winning 29%. So um, if you face this with black, you know, definitely check out uh, the short and sweet. It's a free course for the aggressive Queen's Gambit decline where uh, I show at least one line of that and of course go into main detail in the main course and queen b6 makes a lot of sense here it's first choice in the database where queen c1 is played and we get get ourselves like an equal position which is like a really good queen's gambit for black or like a colors reverse london system or something so that's that's also a good option a bit more on the solid side bishop d3 it was uh you know, more inspiration than anything, because if he takes, I'm just simply developing. And I was looking for a game where I could castle queenside. So that was the logic behind bishop d3. Nothing wrong with it. f4 has never been played before. Um, and did the engine hate it? It just likes the simple knight f3. But I did not, like, blow any sort of advantage by any means. Natural, normal enough. It liked knight d2 better than knight c3. I mean, if, if he takes... This was the the problem that the rook's just too good here and the queen's awkward, has no more targets, and I didn't realize that I would be this heavily favored in the position after this exchange though. Um, knight a6, knight f3. I guess he's just so bottled up that it becomes very problematic. Knight b4, queen d2. Yeah. It's hard, 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 hard to get developed. Makes sense. Knight d7, f5. Wow, just <laughs> f5 is a nice move, actually, because if e6, we end up with queen g6 mate. <laughs> that is dirty. Wow, okay. You gotta look for these like non-standard moves which just paralyze your opponent. F5 is a beauty by the beast machine. Okay. Castle queenside. F5 again because of the same reasons before. Jeez. How do you even think about that? And here I'm just like, okay, I'm developed, you're not. I've got to be better here. F5 again, chipping away at the structure opening things up and getting counterplay. You're completely developed. Why not open things up? I don't know how I'm missing this. Knight c1, and then all my advantage is gone when I'm just playing defense. And I felt 100% I had to be just like winning here. Knight b3. Okay. It liked rook f6. Why? I thought the rook here would be more flexible to cover the base pawns and be able to do the same idea. I thought the knight would just sit here defending so there's no potential sacrifices. So let's find out. Knight g8, and the engine just wants to go back anyway. Yeah. I guess you have a breakthrough. 
no matter what. I mean, is knight g8 really necessary though? Why can't I just like try to press? Okay, queen f1 instead of rook f1. Ah, knight d3. And that's what I'm missing, the redeployment of the knight. Queen f2. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm not entirely convinced because the eval is not changing that much. That needed to be played. Okay, e4 was another just horrendous move. This just definitely was not the game for me. And then my opponent went on this, this like escapade to try to trade queens, which I deny. And now, why did I take the wrong pawn? <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Yeah, just absolutely terrible play. And then rook f4 is much stronger here. So you protect the queen so you can take the pawn. Easy does it. Really, really terrible play. And I gave away all the advantage. But I mean, at this point, I was focusing on the fact for the past like five to ten moves that he is in terrible time trouble with 13 seconds. I've got 50 seconds here. So now it's just not blundering and letting your opponent beat themselves, assuming they're not just an amazing bullet player. So I get rid of the knight, and here I know that I've got multiple checks, and it's going to take him too many moves to try to queen the pawns with the rooks on the back rank. So that'll do it for this pseudo-tromp game.